As mentioned, him and Frank Fanaro were both sub four big blinds at one point during nine handed play, so he's got to be thrilled to have navigated his way to four handed play with 1.6 million locked up. This is a fun spot, chip leader out of the way. Yeah, interesting to see how he navigates here. He doesn't decide this is, you know, he, he might be opening all in with some of his range here for sure. Queen 10 offsuit, probably a little bit too weak to take that approach. But now Benny doesn't necessarily feel the need to avoid this confrontation as the player who covers now. I don't know if 10-6 off is going to qualify, but certainly he would have played a lot more hands in that situation than he would want to play against Elliot. JC has closed that gap magnificently. Now just five bigs less than Benny and well, I don't know what the money line was coming into this final table, but I tell you this much, don't think anyone expected the drama that kicked things off. Benny just open jamming the ace jack for 50 effective into the field and Elliot Hudon from Canada waking up with Kings just one seat over. It's really shifted dynamic at this table, especially with Benny now having the chip leader on his left. And it's just loving life, 194 million, 296 million chips in play. Tired of sitting down at a poker table filled with pros? Then come the WPT Global, the online home of the World Poker Tour. With a maximum of two pros at each table, everyone has a chance to win. We are leveling the playing field at WPT Global. Sign up today with this QR code or go to WPTGlobal.com slash YT and use bonus code YT88 and we'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar. No space for missteps here, Kevin. Gonna be an interesting one for Adam here for sure. I think some players would consider every option basically. I think knowing how light Elliot's gonna be opening on the button, having a suited king, it's a reasonable idea to just say, okay, if you've got one of your inducing hands, like let's run it. I also think calling is totally fine. He's got a suited hand, he's getting a great price. That. And not flush draw for Adam, middle pair. Speaking of modern day coolers, I have a feeling we're going to see chips fly here. Adam with the nut flush draw. Elliot continuing for sub 20% pot with his middle pair. Elliot's going to be very confident he's not up against an ace here. If Adam has an ace with this chip distribution, he's just so likely to put it all in pre-flop and, and hope for the fold. So the ace, it's almost like that card's not on the board. Uh, the only relevant factor here is that it's a club, so. Does check jam and action back on our chip leader. He's going to get a count from the dealer. 13.6. Jam is 13.6 million. Maybe somewhat concerned about his kicker problems. Yeah, and and Adam's played tight at, at this final table so far. I, I know that's certainly giving him some pause, but he does find the, the correct call. See, everyone on the rail taking a peek over said rail to get a sweat of this one. Two cards to come. $487,000 ladder between third and fourth. If Elliot can just hold here, be up to over 200 million in chips with three left. Ace of diamonds on the turn, pairing the board. Adam looking for a king or a club to stay alive. Just know the rail is gonna pop off if Elliot holds here. And he does. Seven of hearts run out. Handshakes all around. And we lose Adam Adler in fourth place in this WPT World Championship. He's going to be going home with 1.6 million. 
And then there were three, Kevin. Yeah, not only three, but as we pointed out, with, with JC kind of climbing the ranks during that four-handed play, it's, it's now Elliot again with all the chips and two players who are very close locked in vying for second place. Thank you, finally, thank you. This is the type of scenario that could go very quickly if Elliot gets the right cards, but also there's just very likely to be a lot of all-in confrontations between Elliot and Super awesome, somebody. something to remember, very fun, yeah. Well, does a million bucks mean anything million to you? Or, you know, like one richer. point three, I believe, one point four. I don't know, what was just it? Two hours uh, into this nice. final table like? coverage. I'm just happy that my kid got to see me play on YouTube. It's exciting. It's a fun day at the casino here, so it was nice. What, was your expect what were your expectations coming into this final table? I was hoping to get three-handed and uh, had a pretty fair shot to get there. Lost the flip there, and uh, that's it, you know? Try again next year. Um, what was the competition like? Do you like this type? What, what, what is your feeling on competition at this level? Yeah, all the guys are great, man. It's super fun to play with them, and it's nice that uh, they let amateurs come in and play the tournament just like me, so it's a good experience. What, what prompted you to come out here? I like coming to the win, man. It's uh, just a beautiful casino to play at and uh, high stakes tournaments like this and big fields, and so it's exciting for me to get out and compete a little bit and have a nice time. Uh, what is this? Does this change your uh, change your uh, thoughts on what you want to do with poker in the future? Like, is this a, is this a catalyst for more tournaments? What's going on? Uh, yeah, I might play a little bit more. I mean, I'm never going to be playing full time or anything like that. I'll play a couple tournaments a year, and uh, that's it. You know, stay at home most with my family and uh, come play cards when I can. Not the worst alley, Kevin. Go! <laughs> It looked like some brief confusion among the players about the dead small blind on that hand that left us with a, a cutoff, even though we're three, three handed. All back to normal now. Now still three-handed with a big blind ante, so still just as much dead money to fight for. Certainly some of those short stack, open, all-in type opportunities are going to be even more appealing than they were before, because we're only, we're only looking at button and small blind here. And it's now five million every three hands in blinds. It's a ton to play for. Power of chips in front of our chip leader. <coughs> and if you don't, 110 big blinds, 220 million at big blind, two mil. Benny down to 20 bigs. JC nursing around 18, if I'm not mistaken. We'll see if Elliot's still going with the any two strategy from the small blind. I don't think he's missed a raise yet. He does decide, oh, <laughs> and he avoids a big one there. He does decide now that we're three-handed that he doesn't want to play every hand. That's the first time. Which is reasonable. That's that's the right way to think about it, I think. Now it's we're getting a little more into that winner-take-all type scenario where there's scary. There's going to be some fighting back for sure. Very scary stuff. Yeah, talk about timing, JC. With ace, queen of spades in the big. First time Elliot's folded in that setup. Elliot's just all business, man. I don't think I've heard him say a word over the last couple of days as we got down to nine handed play. It's just all business, baby. 4.1 million for first. Never a time to be locked in and focused. This is going to be it. Benny still playing pretty tight in the big blind. He even looked a little bit like, mm, not, not so sure if I'm supposed to be playing this tight, but we're going to let you get away with this one. And I'm sure it won't make him feel great to know that he was getting opened into by queen six offsuit.
four million. JC going to come with men on the bottom. Four mil. Benny glancing over uh, Elliot. I believe with that, JC has now moved up to second in chips. To see it. Got, got, got a funny feeling that next year that 29 million might be pipped. A lot of players that miss this one. JC finds the jam, blind v blind, and well, hello. Let's run it to get us heads up. JC is going to need to find an ace. And you came into this final table with the overwhelming chip lead. The all in player at risk with five to come. Wheel? JC asking for a wheel. He did ask for the black four earlier on. A little less confident than the black four, too. <laughs> Biggest spot of both of these players' careers. Wow. Queen, Jack, 10, two diamonds. Top set for Benny. JC picking up an additional media out. King would give him Broadway. And no drama for this one. Benny turning the full house. Fist bumps on the rail. I think we just saw, was that Chris Brewer coming over to give Benny a fist bump? JC down to two and a half bigs. Tired of sitting down at a poker table filled with pros? Then come the WPT Global, the online home of the World Poker Tour. With a maximum of two pros at each table, everyone has a chance to win. We are leveling the playing field at WPT Global. Sign up today with this QR code or go to WPTGlobal.com slash YT and use bonus code YT88 and we'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar. Popping top set, turning a full house, blind via blind. And JC I'm, says, did he look? I don't think he did. I'm not sure that he looked. I don't think he looked. <laughs> so I think that tells, I think that answers my question about how he would approach the situation. He knows the four millions going in next hand. He says, let's run it. Just so happens to have woken up. 5.3, right? 5 .3. Ace king of clubs. How about that for a blind hand, Kevin? And it's a pretty interesting spot because, I mean, it's it's sort of in Benny and Elliot's best interest, both, to knock him out here, collectively. Uh, cool. So not surprising to see Benny go with call, kind of allowing Elliot the opportunity to call behind. And Elliot's now faced with an interesting spot. Do I want to do I want to isolate this pot? Do I want to put essentially put Benny in the blender? Thank you. On Elliot. JC with the blind jam on the button just so happens to have woken up with ace king at clubs. Benny. 18.5. Flatting out the small, and Elliot does decide to ISO, so cards on their backs. That is rough news for Benny. Potential triple spot for JC does have Elliot dominated. Get back up to nine big blinds. JC hold here. Talk about drama. Down to his final two and a half bigs. Wow. Jack, ten, five, two spades, one club. Elliot. Finds the three outer on the flop, but still two cards to come. Needs to dodge the seven outs twice. Four of hearts on the turn. Now leaves us one card away from our fourth elimination of the day. 
card Let's is. get us heads up in this WPT World Championship. It's, it's the Queen of Clubs. <laughs> okay, JC, okay. Thank you. All right, dude. Making sure the dealer understands. <laughs> it's like, I That's won this hilarious. one. hilarious. <laughs> hey, he doesn't look amused. That man right there. And really a, a painful one for Benny, who called the five million there, gets squeezed out of the pot, and now watches his only real opponent, you know, for, for the second place ladder triple up. Ah. That felt real bad. More than triple up. <laughs> uh, reflecting upon my poor decision. Which? The ace two. Ace two? It's fine. <laughs> I don't always have queens though. Yeah. Have to agree with the players at the table that referring that ace, ace deuce open jam for 20 big blinds seems like clearly the correct play to me. Yeah. Just want to make sure how much you have. Uh, uh, yeah, Benny even up, said, it's yeah. fine, man. 14, I don't always 16. have pocket queens, 16, though, you know? 16. <laughs> 16. 18 in total, right? With the pivot, right? No, right? 12, 14, oh, sorry. 16. Yeah. Oh, then. So just going to ship it in from the small. Wow, JC with another spot. Yep. Puts the chips in the middle. Kevin, it's been non-stop action today. Lost track of how many all-ins we've had. JC looking to go back to back. Just hold here. To be nursing a 17 I don't big think I want to wheel this time. Said he doesn't want to wheel this time. What do you want, JC? Let us know. You've been calling cards. Three, four, five wheel. Hmm? Wow. Dealer, take a day off. <laughs> Not straight for Elliot. By the clubs. <laughs> Running clubs needed for JC. Feels ring. <laughs> Asking for the five two, so he has a, a chance I? at a chop. Turn card is Good game. Queen of Spades on the turn. Gonna settle this one. Gonna lose our man JC Musa in third place. He's gonna be walking home with two million and ninety-five thousand dollars for his efforts. Okay. We are now heads up in this WPT World Championship. Not to needle you. Feels like a needle's coming. But I don't recall your rail or Rampage's rail for that fact in the 25k being quite as rowdy when either of you won a pot. <laughs> well, in fairness, we were playing at 2 a.m. That's true. That is true. <laughs> and the, uh, the stage was a little smaller. That's very true. Don't think we had as much seating. I think we had about 12 chairs on each side of the table. Going back. Earlier on in the festival, that 25k getting 108 runners just to really send a message as to how epic this WPT festival has been. Both players flopping top pair in this limped pot. And right away you can see the change of pace, right? We're seeing a suited ace limp the button and then a7 check in the big blind. Both players kind of recognizing that the pace of play has to change. Benny doesn't really want to be all in pre-flop for 33 big blinds with this hand. Maybe with some offsuit aces, but not with this one. And it will be interesting to see if he decides to check raise this flop or check call. I think both are very vi viable options. He is coming for check raise. It's 6.5 million to go. Certainly heads up in in any heads-up scenario, top pair is a really strong hand. But because this went limp check pre-flop, we start with 6 million in the pot and there's over 60 million behind, over 10 to 1. So I do think we're going to see some caution. Not necessarily just going to see bet bet all in and snap call it off unless someone improves to two pair. Yeah, the WPT executive tour director, Matt Savage, 
calling the action for players on the live rail. Tricky turn spot for sure. I think part of what Benny's going to be thinking about is, OK, if I bet here, I get value from all the draws that just developed on this turn card. But he also doesn't want to overplay his hand. He, he has no kicker that plays anymore. So he chops with every ace. He does decide just to check. And kind of a similar situation for Elliot, honestly. Like, he, there's value to be had here, but it's thin. 19 million in the middle. Couple of straights completing on this Queen of Clubs turn. And they're reaching for chips. This just a classic set the price on the turn to knuckle back rivers. It does look like it for sure. Kind of challenging the idea that Benny would ever check a hand like two pair plus on this card. You know, if he, if he had jack nine, ten eight, king ten, like a lot of these hands probably just keep betting on the queen. It really does look like Benny's either giving up, maybe has a queen, maybe has a weak ace. None of these hands really check raise against this kind of bet so he's just getting his value and especially on this river I'd be surprised to see anything other than a, a showdown here jack of clubs making it official they are going to chop this pot up at showdown unless Elliot can get Benny off of a chop after having it knuckled to him on the turn and river Definitely the type of play that you don't see as much these days, but some players, when they recognize, okay, you just have an ace here at best, they'll just recognize it's kind of a free roll situation and just put all the chips in or put a big bet in and hope for the good result. If he identifies this as a free roll, it, it's a pretty cool play. It's very unlikely that Benny check raises a jack on the flop. It has to be jack nine, probably. Tired of sitting down at a poker table filled with pros? Then come to WPT Global, the online home of the World Poker Tour. With a maximum of two pros at each table, everyone has a chance to win. We are leveling the playing field at WPT Global. Sign up today with this QR code or go to WPTGlobal.com YT and use bonus code YT88 and we'll match your first deposit dollar for dollar. have to think that's what's going through his head right now is just like is there ever a situation where my hand's not chopping or winning here he does knuckle it back after taking his time they're going to chop this one up <coughs> I like Elliot taking his time there on the river just really thinking it through totally agree I think it's very easy to chalk up these situations as standard and just yeah. not really give it proper thought. But I mean, th there's opportunity to make creative plays in spots like that if you're really confident in your read of the situation. Uh, you could just find like an all-in or something. Sure I, I had a value bet or not. Making sure that if I had a value bet or not, I could figure it out. It sounded like an honest answer. Yeah, I was about to say, I wouldn't be giving too much information away to my table mate when we're playing for 1.3 million, but I do love the honesty of Canada's Elliot Houdon. Can I have a water, please? Water? See thank Benny you. choosing Parking another water, though, open raise, and he... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Again, it's not clear to me what his button strategy looks like because he's been dealt a couple of pretty good hands on the button already. Still reasonable chance he's doing plenty of limping, but... Pocket fives. Definitely good enough, for go, go, good enough to go for value, and even if he <coughs> faced a three bet, just a really strong pair. Still out in front of the five. It's a bit distracted by the rail, by the looks of things. Maybe some friends making it late to the final table. 
And they're picking up some equity on the turn in the form of a gut shot. Pocket fives of Benny still good. Those of you just joining us, our heads up for the WPT World Championship title. Both these players guaranteed 2.8 million for their efforts. The eventual champion will be walking home with $4,146,000. Be a career best score for both these players. This hand here, a really good example, I think, of that passive seeming play that's, that's more common in a heads up environment. Benny deciding not to see about the flop just because he has showdown value. He doesn't necessarily feel there's any advantage in a heads up raised pot. And Elliot not bluffing with his gut shot just because he, he wants to play cautiously, right? Like, he, it's not that hard to make a draw, it's not that hard to have a, a weak hand that might bluff. But it's hard to make a strong hand, so I think wisely choosing not to just throw blind aggression Benny's way just because he's dealt a gut shot, right? He he gives one up. It's okay to give up a, a reasonable number of these pots. Uh, doesn't mean that he's not fighting hard enough, right? <coughs> yeah, always easy to be an armchair critic, if you will, especially from the booth. We can see the whole cards. Yeah, Elliot just opting to wave the white flag with that nine high. Reminds me of those poker memes that go around every now and then. Well, I'm at bottom of range, I have to bluff. No, <laughs> not for Elliot. Going with seven million out of position. Three and a half big blinds. Definitely looks like a good enough price for Elliot to continue these hands. He has been limping. I think he's limped every every opportunity so far. So the plan for sure is to, you know, fold some of those much weaker <coughs> hands. But queen six suited, absolutely good enough to call. With Benny eye swing from the big to seven million, we have our first the inflated pot of this heads up match. 16 million out there. And these are really the most like telling types of situations for how they're how these players are going to play their strategy. These are very average holdings for a situation like this. King high has plenty of value here. Queen high backdoor flustra has plenty of value here. I'm always curious if they're going to go with kind of like the floating approach or maybe maybe just sacrificing the pot. And it's not a crazy spot to raise either. Benny continuing for one third. As we already mentioned, Elliot with the backdoor spades. In position, it's going to come with the float. 27 million in the middle, king high v queen high. And well, king of hearts on the turn, giving Benny top pair. Now really the only way Elliot gets into trouble if Benny decides to check, but he is eyeing his stack. Still a ton of value to be had, right? Certainly I think the concern is if we, if we check, not only do we give flush draws a look at a free river, because you know, just like Elliot floats here with the three spades on the flop, he would float with almost any three hearts. So you don't want to give those hands a, a free look, especially Benny not having a heart in his hand. Although it wouldn't shock me to see him check occasionally with a hand like this, and there's just a lot of ways Elliot can bluff when, when checked to. Benny firing twice just north of half pot, setting up a very natural river SPR of less than one. No dice this time, but a nice start to this heads up match for Benny, chipping up nicely here. 87 million in chips now. Now it really feels like we've got a heads up match on our hands. 100 big blinds plays 43. Oh. Reducing the gap quite significantly. Started off 3 to 1 chip deficit. Thank you. 87. Thank you. Still a long old ways to go.
casual 1.3 million heads up match on a Tuesday evening. So now we're seeing Benny open raise with you know, a pretty trashy hand, you know, like bottom 20% bottom or so. So it does seem like, at least for this stack depth, his overwhelming strategy is to, is to open raise. Elliot correctly deducing that even Jack-5 offsuit is strong enough to defend in the big blinds. When there's a big blind ante and he's only raising the minimum, uh, we're going to play a lot of hands in the big blind. 10-7 deuce, two-tone. Expect to see Benny continue with... I mean, is, is Benny just playing a 100% stabbing range on, on a lot of these ball textures with range? Yeah, he certainly doesn't have to. I mean, we, we did even see him check behind on King 6-3, although he had some showdown value there. Right. But it, it wouldn't surprise me at all. Here he has the jack, which is actually some relevant interaction. I mean, yeah. for, for wide ranges, just having three to a straight is relevant enough interaction to maybe tip the scales for him to to bet the flop there. But I I think especially seeing him bet 6 million into into 10, I think we'd see him check sometimes as well with, with weekends. <clears throat> Yeah. Three million for Benny. Two hundred and four million for Elliot. I do apologize, two hundred and three million for Elliot. Benny definitely looked like he was considering there if his hand was strong enough to to raise for value or if he just wants to check. Maybe a little bit concerned about the trap limp eventually coming, right? I mean, this is now four or five limps in a row. He's thinking, okay, at some point he's going to limp a strong hand. I don't necessarily want to walk into it with a raise. We seem to be seeing two very different strategies being played on the bottom. Elliot limping with 100% of hands thus far. Benny playing more aggressively with not only top of range, but we also just saw the, the bottom parts of Benny's range as Elliot turns an open ender. There is a card in the deck, Kevin, that would give Benny a full double, one would assume, in the way this hand's played out. Yeah, this. This hand that he's floated on the flop, Queen Jack, is deceptively strong on, on the 8-6 deuce. He's got a lot of clean top pair outs. He's got the clean nut straight draw on the 9 or the 10. And now he's getting into a situation where I have to think he wants to continue this hand, although it's, it's it, it will be interesting to see if he decides to play it aggressively, try and maybe fold Elliot off of his like 8x thinner value bets, or if he just calls again, recognizing that he's ahead of most of the bluffs. Continuing for 80% on this nine of diamonds turn. Putting a ton of pressure on exactly these types of holdings. And certainly this might not look like a clear continue to Benny. I mean, the nine is going to complete a lot of his true draws on the flop, like a lot of his gut shots. So it doesn't exactly look like a card that Elliot's going to play too aggressively, right? It, it, it doesn't look like the most advantageous spot to keep bluffing. Elliot, of course, has a perfect hand for it. And he really taking his time on this turn spot. You can understand why 1.3 million on the line. The entire poker world watching as well. Thinking this one through. All the options on the table for this one, Kevin? I really do think so, although it, it certainly feels like, oh, I was <laughs> I was tempted to say that he's thought this long. He doesn't look like he wants Wait. to fold. Yeah, here here comes the check raise. <coughs> Benny, the three and a half X check raise. Check called flop. Now check raising turn. 46 million in the middle action. Back on Elliot with his open ender. And this is a nasty spot. I mean, a, an open ender is usually too good of a draw and heads up to fold to one raise. But there's the real chance that he's just drawing dead here. Like, he's up against 10-7 for value. He's up against 7-5 for value. There's, there's no guarantee that his draw is live at all. 
And as you pointed out here, even though Benny's bluffing, half of his outs are a disaster. Elliot makes the call, Kevin. Looks like he sees some opportunity to maybe bluff on a diamond, maybe bluff on like a, a three even. 66 oh. million in the middle, and it's the clean five of clubs. And of course, there's the opportunity to make the best straight in a spot where Benny is going to be hard pressed not to bluff. SPR less than one. 66 million in the middle. Elliot with the second nuts. Surely, Benny hasn't check raised turn to give up Rivers as well. But with the four liner on board. Wow. Oh. Kevin, this could be it. Snap call from Elliot, and we have ourselves a WPT World Championship champion. And just like that, you hear Matt Savage say that he's made a straight and it's all over. And just like that, Kevin Rabichow, we have ourselves our WPT World Championship champion. It is Canada's Elliot Arden coming out on top for $4,146,000 from us here in the booth. It's been an absolute pleasure. Catch you guys for the next WPT.